changes depending on the information you're getting. You hear gunshots, you're moving with intent. It's more like a, uh, uh, like a hostage rescue or a high risk warrant type activity where there's, there's a high degree of movement, there's intensity, there's direct action. But it, once that, that signal abates, you don't hear the gunshots anymore. Who is he? We don't quite know. We know he's kind of up there somewhere. Because that's where we heard him last. And he did all of a sudden magically transport across the campus. Okay? So, you know, if you have a large team, for example, this is where you would go. <clears throat> okay, uh, and, and I don't know the guy's names, but let's say, okay, team of three, uh, and the first one is Alpha, second one is Bravo, third one is Charlie. Okay, uh, Charlie's upstairs. Uh, Bravo, take perimeter outside the building, right? So in the event the bad guy decides to come out, you're not going to have to do the whack-a-mole all over campus with him. You contain him inside the building, right? Uh, communication is important. I imagine you guys have that. So, um, but uh, yeah, travel and then tactical. <clears throat> um, and then there's there's the the third aspect where you're you're going from tactical to a lower degree of tactical, where you're still doing everything the same way, but you're doing it slower because the urgency has decreased. If he's not shooting, he's not killing. And <clears throat> there is a risk to moving dynamically. There's a risk because you know you can't um, you can't triage the room, the hallway, the corner as well if you're in a hurry. All right, you are doing that when the bad guy is occupied. He's occupied with with. <coughs> Excuse me. He's occupied with shooting people. Great. You can take that risk. But once the shooting stops, what's he doing? Is he waiting for you now? Or, or what? So we need to slow it down. We're still on the hunt. But the intensity decreases a little bit. And maybe intensity is not the, the right word. The intensity remains the speed. The speed with which you move decreases until you have a greater certainty of where the bad guy might be. Right? Uh, a couple things on techniques. Anybody notice me? Grab Gabe's ass. Okay, that's an intentional signal. Okay, it used to be taught that you would slap on the shoulder or whatever, and then that's the go signal. Here's the problem with that. What if I want to look down the hallway that he's pulling security on, and I come up just so I can do this, so I, I know what we're looking at, and he takes off. Okay. So additionally, as a, as a number two man, not only do you want to let him know you're there, and then a grab of the back of the leg or the, the ass is I'm ready. So this lets you know I'm here, ready to put in work. You got a second man, which means you can dump a room. The squeeze lets you know that I'm ready to go. And then he makes the decision on when to go. So you don't want to shove the guy into the danger area. Okay, additionally, the responsibility of the number two man is if your number one man gets a little bit of buck fever, you can grab his, grab his shirt, you can grab him by a sling swivel and, and drag him back into the room. If you've got a, all right, something I'll say. The team leader's job, is to motivate the reluctant and to restrain the over exuberant. Okay, uh, the reluctant is the guy you know that he's there. <clears throat> he's been through all the classes. He's not a warrior, right? And he's realizing at the moment of truth that he really doesn't belong on that team. Because okay? he's a pussy. Uh, you know, not necessarily. He's just you know not everybody's cut out for this. You know, and, and but he's there, and, and you, you got to go, right? And so, but it's not happening. Uh, this is the time for the team leader to go, okay, fall back on number one man now and drive the team forward. Right, because you're, you gotta do it, you gotta go, because if you don't, people keep dying. <coughs> um, there, there's, there's nothing wrong with somebody that's more experienced stepping up and replacing somebody that's lesser experienced, right? So let's say Greg came up to a problem and, uh, you know, Greg's got a lot of experience, but let's say he's up here, <coughs> and, uh, you know, the tactical problem kind of is befuddling, right? Um, he's going, oh, there's too much to do, there's too much to do, and I'm going, okay, with you, and he's not going. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to go like this in front. Okay, let's go this way. Yeah, it's perfect, not an ego thing, perfectly it's perfectly okay. acceptable. It's perfectly okay. And then later, later, we're going to go do what? He says, yeah. when we hit the stairs, and we had, I didn't know which way was best. Called okay. analysis paralysis. No problem. Let's go back over it and let's now, as a training thing for the team, <clears throat> which is the way that we're going to do this. Every every situation in every building 
the earth has an answer. It's, it's, like, a, it's like a math problem. Uh, it's like a chess game. <clears throat> you know, you just have to figure out what the sequence is for this problem so you can solve it. Okay? Yeah, it's like a puzzle box. You gotta figure out the appropriate sequence that opens the box. That opens the box. Um, a couple more things on doors and techniques with doors. Uh, that just, and I'll, none of these are hard and fast rules, guys. A lot of these, uh, it's, you know, sometimes maybe, and it depends, okay? Um, but uh, they're decent rules of thumb because they, they tend to put you in a better position of advantage. It's, anybody do jujitsu? Okay, you're always working for advantage on the map, okay, position advantage, same thing as that wheel. Okay, let's look at this door again. Uh, <coughs> this is a good example. <coughs> Why come through the big door? Because uh, you said it was a wall. <laughs> No, that's the, that I actually learned. Uh, it was funny, I was teaching uh, Urban Counterinsurgency at Naval uh, Warfare, and uh, we were about to demo some CTV, and uh, uh, my SL1 was like, okay, now grab me in the ass. And I was like, what? Oh, grab me in the ass, that's the ghost signal. I'm like, you're full of shit. Like, I'm gonna grab your ass in front of all these, you know, pipe hitters. And uh, I'm gonna look like the biggest gay guy, you know. And he's like, "No, I'm serious. It's the ghost signal." That's where I learned it from. Uh, but anyway, okay. So doors. One thing about doors. I always check to see if they're unlocked. Mm -hmm. You don't need to be kicking down doors that are unlocked. Okay. So always check to see if it's unlocked. Okay. Now we talked about the two dangerous corners, right? As you come into a room. Of the two, which is more dangerous? I would say this one is less dangerous. Really? And here's why. This is your security for the one man when he comes in. So with the door that opens this direction, especially on a center fed room, this reduces visibility, also provides a little bit of cover and concealment. So that's my danger corner. So as the, as the first person in the room, this is my danger corner. That's the one I want to address if I'm the first person in the room. Because again, I don't want a button hook or have to drive the door <coughs> with me to, to make this corner. <coughs> this, as the one man penetrates this direction, the door's got his back. And again, the, the two man's right on top of him. So if that's his spot, because as he comes in, can you see that corner? Mm -hmm. Right? Boom, there's his responsibility. That's my responsibility, boom, clear. And then I'm right here, okay, until one of us decides that we're going to pass no man's land for that corner. Does that make sense? So How do you dress the behind the door? Is. Say again? How do you dress behind the door then? Is that through the crack? Uh, mm -hmm. Well, you can either slam it all the way open or project <coughs> uh, yeah. in the room. I mean, you can't, I mean, unless you're built like their son, Look, you can't hide in that corner. You, there's, there's a process that we used to do. We call softening the room, <coughs> right? If you, if you just kind of like, okay, you walk up and here we go, boom, you're kind of jumping off into space and hoping it works out. <clears throat> I like to soften the room. I may just come in through here, okay, and I've just got a quick visual. Now look, right here, I look right through the crack. What have I got? If I see somebody there hiding and it fits the profile of what I'm hunting, I'll shoot them right through the crack, okay? If it's somebody else, you know, <clears throat> um, I can tell that maybe it's a, a, a victim hiding. You're going to know. Okay? Uh, I know the bad guy's not there. Okay? Uh, <clears throat> so I'll, I'll, I'll be aware of that. But, um, you know, I'm going to soften this as much as possible so by the time that I make entry, I kind of know where the danger areas are. And then I'm going to focus on those danger areas. And if there is a victim hiding behind there, I focus on the danger areas, I come back in here, and I go, hey, Get the fuck out of here, right? You know, go outside, right through there. Go, 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 go. Uh, and, uh, you know, and then we carry on with the problem. And unlike the outer <coughs> opening door, uh, if I'm the one man, I want to open this. 
I want to open this. I don't. I don't want somebody to cross the fatal funnel and open it for me because it, it carries no advantage. Yeah. How do you sense? how do you handle the super heavy door closers? Well, you know what? This has got a, a lot. Of well, yeah, but I mean, if you were actually having yeah, to, screw this thing up top. if you were actually having to open it, these doors are super heavy. You got it. Okay. So, come on, in, dude. <clears throat> okay. You manage the door physically. Uh, let me borrow a pistol so it doesn't look like I'm. Here, this looks good on film. <clears throat> okay. So, if I have a choice, sometimes you do, sometimes you don't. I want to attack this door from the, the, the doorknob side because <clears throat> here I feel like I am overexposed mm -hmm. to somebody on the other side here. Yeah. Okay. If there's two of us, what's he doing? He's pointing in right there, right there. Okay. Now, I, I'll do it this way if I have to. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut my pistols right here. All right. Okay, you see how that worked? I just open the door and I use the, the speed of the door. <coughs> if the plan is not to penetrate right away, okay, I can use my leg. Okay, now he goes through. Okay. Right? If I have to stop. So I use my body on the door. You don't have to put hands on something in order to control it. 